Okay, well, I'm still working with this uh, Duracell rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery testing. And I've done a lot of tests with that battery to see what the heck's going on. And also with this oscillator. And today I tried the battery on this pulse motor that I've had for quite a number of years now. But um, I already worked it today a little bit better. And I want to run a test with that battery on this motor. And uh, it's less than a milliamp. And it's a 2,500 milliamp per hour battery. So I'm just going to let this thing go for about a year and uh, see what's going on and see how that one runs. Uh, this one here, based on the testing, uh, Magnet Man's uh, replication of this that's run for three years on that battery, uh, based on the testing, that is totally realistic with a normal drain on that 2500 milliamp hour battery um, the drain on this um, system is um, way 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 down there in the microamps uh, this one here is also in the microamp it's about three four hundred microamps um, i put it down as less than a milliamp but it's in the microamps so this will be an interesting test too uh, this is um, more efficient as far as um, amp draw but this one here I've got a, a blinking light plus the motion so this will be interesting to watch this one but as these things drain down the amp draw does go down on this on both of these devices as uh, you drain the battery down um, uh, the amp draw goes way down and I think that's one of the reasons Magnet Man got this thing going so long and I think it's gonna run several years more to tell you the truth uh, based on my testing, uh, the uh, uh, discharge curve on these nickel metal hydrides is they go down and then they go like this and then they go way down. And um, the inner loop, I think that's how it's spelled, and these Duracells are the best nickel metal hydrides that I could find uh, data on. And both of them had this uh, starting out at about 1.4 something, then they go down to that one three one two and they go along like this and then they drop off and i think magnet man said he's at about 1.21 or something or 1.201 so he's on this long discharge curve before it's going to drop off it's just how long before his stops uh, these will run down to about half a volt so his might keep going in a blink for a long time um, this one here stops at about 0.7.8 and I've got a, an adjustment here to as this uh, drains down I can tweak it to keep it going um, this is an old old circuit it's a complementary transistor the dad have circuit modified and you can see how I've drawn this it's just not a normal schematic and, uh, if you put the transistors back to back like this or face to face however you want to call it you can connect them up like this and uh, make a very uh, interesting deal and when I reworked this today let me show you what I did this is the first time I've done this I put it on a tongue depressor stick and I just drilled holes in the tongue depressor stick and made a circuit board that way and I've never done this before so I thought I might try it and see um, how that's going to work out but that's a real easy way to set up a circuit. Now, some of the guys are going to say, oh, you're going to have leakage through the wood. Yeah, maybe. I don't really care. We'll see what happens. But um, depending on the moisture content of the wood and all that good stuff. But um, that was an easy way to do a circuit board. If you don't want to solder up a regular circuit board, just punch holes in a tongue depressor and put your transistors and components on that thing like that and solder it up. Um, rather than doing a dead bug I had this on a little prototype board initially and uh, the, the connections on the prototype board kept corroding and it would stop and so today I decided you know what let's just try this for a year or so and see what happens on that and like I say it was an easy way to to do it uh, this is just the needle with a hole in a lid with a brass screw as the bearing Let me put this on here 
and it doesn't draw any juice until you trigger the transistor with the magnet so if you want to stop it it's real easy just to take the rotor and stop it then the motor is not drawing any juice at all anyway this is where I'm at with this uh, project this one is in a plastic box that sits over on that shelf and uh, I can watch it every night and uh, when these start to visibly blink that's when I know this is going down in, in value and that, that could take a long long time but that's the latest thanks for watching